welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. There we go. Awesome. I uh, hope that you are having a fantastic day. We are going to be making our strawberry field salad. I'm so excited to eat these. And uh, to get us started, I have a joke. You have a joke. I have a joke for us. Share a joke and we can lower the music. Siri, lower the music. Siri, lower the music. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. So, uh, Paulina. Yes. <clears throat> how did the cannibal win the cooking contest? I don't know. <laughs> how did the cannibal... How did the cannibal win the cooking contest? You know what a cannibal is, right? Somebody who eats... Evil. Yeah, somebody. Which is a really random joke. It to is say. a very random and joke. And the cooking show. Well, the, the um, cannibal won though. So how did the cannibal win the cooking class? It or ate cooking everyone. Contest? Good. That was pretty good. It ate everyone. Maybe you guys who are watching can have a guess as well. But the cannibal won the cooking contest with a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> that was really good. You have to admit that, that was, was good, really right? good. That was yeah, really good. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, anyway. I'm gonna go see behind the scenes if anybody's commenting. Yeah, so I if you're joining you me right push. now, give me a hashtag number one. Let me know where you're listening from if you join me later as the recording. Hashtag two, also let me know where you're listening from. And thank you for joining. We are making a really simple but tasty salad, the strawberry field salad. And since we have a little bit of extra time, because this is pretty simple, I'm gonna. Uh, show a couple new techniques and a couple new appliance type things that are a must for the serious cook and the non-serious cook. All right, <clears throat> I'm sure we have lots of people laughing at those really Kathleen funny Kathleen is for sure laughing. All right, Kathleen, welcome, Kathleen. Hi, Jane. Jane and Chico are watching. Jane and Chico, welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. Great to have you. See everyone. All right, to start off with, I want I I showed this utensil. This is a uh, type of what they call a mandolin. This is a very inexpensive mandolin and it comes with different attachments so you can grade cheese with it, you can do a bunch of different things with it. Um, the the Ikenjillion, which makes, you know, kind of like noodling. So this does a lot of cool things. So I wanted to demo this for you. Um, so let's take a look at it over here. Let's take a look at it over here. Okay. So we're, I, I'm gonna start with the cucumber. I have the mandolin setting here. So this is just a real thin slice. You have to really be careful that you don't cut yourself. Very easy to do. So when I have this much cucumber, I'm just gonna, you know, just do this. You can see how fast it is to do this. And when I get closer to the end, okay, when I get closer to the end, I'm gonna slow down and then I'm gonna put this little guard on. Different things have different guards and then I'm gonna finish it off like that and then I eat the last piece. Now the nice thing about this, not only does it save a ton of time, as you can see how fast that, that was, but you also get really good consistency with the cucumber slices. And so when you're doing a salad, having that consistency is really, really, really helpful. Let's see if we have any comments. Let's see who's, who's here, who's saying hi. No battery. Bonnie is cooking. She's saying number one. Bonnie's cooking. cooking. Bonnie did not like my Worcestershire sauce recipe. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Bobby. But I hopefully you're doing some marinade, and I think you're replacing it with some balsamic tonight. So, very good. Bonnie and Chico is here. Christine Jane. is saying, what a beautiful day for strawberries and salad. Isn't it? It is a beautiful it day. It is a beautiful day. Mary's on with us. Good evening to both of you. Good evening, Mary. Kathy's watching Kathy, with us. Kathy. Welcome, Mary. Kathy. Welcome, Mary. Welcome. Lenore. Lenore. And Jane. And Jane. All right, guys. Jane's letting you know to uh, no more jokes for you, David. Oh, no more jokes. I'm sorry. It was, I thought it was good. All right, I thought it was good. Um, also, let me show you on the mandolin here. I'm going to also do my strawberries. And typically when you do a salad, you cut your strawberries like this. But for creativeness, I'm gonna cut my strawberries like this on the mandolin. And then a, a little tip, if you kind of, as you're doing this, if you kind of slide the strawberry, you see how I'm starting up here and coming down here? Like that, it just helps that strawberry cut just a little bit better, okay? And then by rotating the strawberry around, I get a little bit you know, a little bit better cut. And then I just use my finger here to the end. I'm go of course, I'm going really slow. And uh, then I get to eat a little bit. So I'm gonna slice up these strawberries here with you. And you can see about how many I'm doing. These are the strawberries that are gonna top the salad, okay? 
So we, they, when, when we're dealing with a salad, you're gonna get a lot better salad if you consistently have the same size pieces. So one of the keys to a really great salad, um, as far as, I know this is gonna sound silly, but as far as mouthfeel, um, is gonna be the consistent size of what you're cutting. And that's things that we really don't typically consider is like what's going on in my mouth, right? So one of the things that subconsciously you don't even realize okay. is that um, the size of things makes a difference, okay? So if we have things that are the same thickness and the same size, we're gonna have a better um, salad experience and overall just a better eating experience. Okay, so I'm just using this to cut these strawberries up. These are the ones that I will end up topping my, topping my salad with here. You can see all these guys here. All right, let me finish the rest of these. I'll go a little bit quicker now that you guys kind of got the concept, but we're cutting up our strawberries. We're trying to cut them the same size. You know, there's not a wrong way to do this. Um, so if you don't have a mandolin and you're, you know, having some different sizes, it's not the end of the world. It's still gonna taste amazing. But this is your tip for just making things just a little bit better and hopefully not cutting yourself. No cutting yourself. So again, if you're watching and cooking with me, I am just slicing up my berries and I just wanted to show you this technique. After we get done with this, we're going to move on to making our vinaigrette, which I am super excited about. Uh, Jane's asking, where do you get the mandolin? Um, I will put a, a link to this as well, Jane. I believe this is just another Amazon thing. Um, so they're very, th this particular one, you can spend a lot of money on a mandolin. This particular one for most kitchens is just fine. And I want to say it was under 20 bucks. It does a lot of different nice things. Okay, so we got our strawberries ready to go. I'm just going to put them in here. And then a uh, reminder technique. I also, um, I had some extra cherry tomatoes. So, hmm, I'm gonna go ahead, oh, yep, strawberries are ripped. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, do this technique again with these. There we go, let me get rid of all these strawberries. C CJ, Dr. C CJ is on with us. Mm, mm. Hi. Judy, Hi, Dr. Is CJ. Susan's Judy, Susan. Judy and Susan, great to have everybody. Mm, these strawberries are so good, by the way. I just ate all the leftovers there. Okay, so another technique, I went over this a couple weeks ago, but I wanna show some of our new new people here. For cutting cherry tomatoes, if you wanna get them cut in half, if you put the cherry tomatoes that you wanna cut in half on a, um, I'm, I'm using a Tupperware top, you know like those um, Cool Whip lids, if you get two of them, Tupperware lids work, anything like this works, and then you wanna use a serrated knife. So you can see here, a nice serrated blade. If you use a regular blade, it's just not gonna break through the skin of the tomato. So I have two that are the same size, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set one on top of the other. So you can see that here. You can see the space we have. And then basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to um, horizontally cut right through the middle here. You can see that here, horizontally cut right through the middle. All right, so let me put this down here. I use my hand to kind of on top and then sawing this way with this. I'm making sure I'm right in the middle or as, as in the middle as I can be. Okay, and we have nicely cut in half Voila. cherry tomatoes. And look at how fast that was. You can see there we got pretty even pieces there and that was super fast. We just cut all of those. We just saved ourselves a bunch of time. We did cause a few extra dishes, but we're okay with that. Okay. Set those aside here, perfect. All right, and then I'm going to also go through again uh, the fastest and best way to peel an onion. Uh, if you've been following along with our show, we have done this before, but I wanted to go over it here since we needed a little bit of purple onion for this. And by the way, the purple onion um, on this salad just really, really complements the colors so nicely. The purple onion also has a very strong taste to it, so we don't want to overdo it. Um, but when we're dealing with the purple onion, we're going to st start by cutting it in half just like this, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut off this end, not the end. I call this the end with the hair. Leave the hair on, 
but I'm going to cut off this end right here. All right, just like so. And then I'm going to get rid of this. All right. <clears throat> then what I, it allows me to do is it allows me to hold the onion like this and very easily find that layer that I want to peel off. All right, so I can super easy to peel that layer off, be able to stick that right back in the garbage here. So you can see how easy that was and I get a nice, nice peeled even onion. Okay, and I'm, I only need half. I don't, you don't want to overdo the purple onion on this. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to save this one for later. But uh, then I'm not um, dicing the onion. So what I'm going to just do is I'm just going to cut some strips here. Again, when you're, when you're holding your knife, you want to hold where your knife meets your handle, which is right here, not here, not here, not this, okay? You're holding right here. And then you're letting your knife slide just like that. Don't push down, you know, get a nice sharp knife. Use your claw grip, which is like this, so you don't cut your fingers off, okay? So you're holding like this. And then just nice and easy cuts. Let the knife do it. You want, you want to use pretty thin, I would say as thin as you can, cuts. So we get a nice thin and as even as possible onion. You could also do this on the mandolin, but uh, I'm gonna do it with my knife because I love this knife so much. It's such a nice knife. And then what I really love about this part is I can hold the hair of the onion, keeping my fingers out of the way, and really get into the last little bits of the onion. Oh, that was that. close. Yeah, just like so. Wait a second, wait a second. <clears throat> you saw it here. You saw it here, ready? I'm gonna throw this over my shoulder and it's gonna land in the bowl. First take, this is live, this is live Facebook right now, people, so just watch, here we go. Okay, it didn't work. <laughs> Cut, redo. Redo. <laughs> Where's my video person? All right, and action. So this is live TV, and what you're gonna see here is me throw this over my shoulder and land in the bowl. Yeah! Yay! Every crowd goes wild. We have to have smiley faces and thumbs ups. Oh, we have a little more than smiley faces. Oh, more than smiley faces. You just wait and see. Oh, just I give can't me wait a second see. to do this. All right, everybody, I will need your attention to watch the screen as Every Davis dances. Ah, <laughs> that is that is my uh, mean Woo! twisting dance that I do. And then you clap for yourself. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah. So there it is. Well, come on, you gotta clap for yourself when you do something so amazing, right? All right, so how many of you like the uh, mandolin? Or how many of you already have a mandolin and love using it for stuff like this? Let me know if that's something that you already have in your repertoire. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to making our, oh, wait a second, wait a second, it's time for our commercial break. Commercial has been brought to you by Zevia, and we just got in our kids' Zevias, so check it out, I have fizzy apple, and look at the nice cute little can size. There is nothing in this. There's no calories, no artificial colors, no artificial dyes, no red dye number whatever, no yellow whatever, no nothings. Um, it has, it's sweetened with stevia. It is delicious. I have fizzy apple, and it has, look at this, look at this, look at this. Here, let's get a close, can we get a close up here? Yes, we can. Boom, close up, there we go. Uh, look at that, we've got, we got uh, Daffy Duck on there, we've got Mickey Mouse on the fruit punch, we've got, um, Strawberry lemonade, and we have Minnie Mouse. Looks like, and we have cream. Donald Duck with orange cream. That's so. I haven't tasted. You haven't any tasted of this. these. Wait, wait, wait. The real question is, can adults drink them? The adults can drink them, and adults can put vodka in them too. <laughs> um, actually, you know, I really tried for a long time to do a good Donald Duck impersonation. I never succeeded, but the only thing I can do with my Donald Duck voice is be very angry. All right. Okay, so you want to see an angry Donald Duck? Yeah, but I have to do something bad to see an angry Donald Duck. <laughs> That's it. I don't know what he said, but I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so let's try one of these. The, my, right. I really like the orange cream. Um, by the way, we, ship, we can ship these to you, um, or you can pick them up at one of our offices. But this is a brand new release by Zevia. You will not probably find this in any store. Ooh, exclusive. Mm -hmm. Exclusive. Orange Zevia. Orange Zevia. Mm -hmm. I really like the oh, orange one. Should we put in a glass so we can show how clear it is? I'm gonna wait in glass. There you go. Oh, my favorite glass. Favorite glass. 
Am I the only one who has like a favorite glass? If you have a favorite glass, give me a um, favorite glass. Favorite glass? This is her favorite glass. It she uses is. This all the time. I do. Make Even me... her coffee in the morning. I do not. <laughs> See, look at that. Clear. It's so clear. Look at that. All right. Try it. It's tastes really like candy. good. Tastes like candy. It really does. It's if your kids good. want candy, just give them one of these. Give them one of these. So anyway, just a healthier option for your um, kids or grandkids or husband that might act like a kid. Great options. Okay, so we have several different flavors. Just wanted to show you guys those. We've got our onion cut up. Let's talk about how we're going to make our vinaigrette. So what you want to do is um, slice your strawberries in about half and then fill up all the way with strawberries. Fill up a single serving blender with strawberries. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take a half a cup, okay, I've already done this, but I'm just showing you here, half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Now you could also do balsamic vinegar. Um, if you're not a fan of apple cider vinegar, I will say the apple cider vinegar with the mother is the best one, okay? So just want to point that out as far as health benefits. It's really, really good. And then um, also uh, I'm using our French vanilla stevia. Let's get a Okay, I'm also using our French vanilla stevia here. This is excellent. I went with a tablespoon of uh, stone ground mustard, a tablespoon of stone ground mustard, and all of that is in here. And now we're going to blend it together. Now, I want to show you how much stevia I'm putting in. Some of this is trial and error, okay? So I'm going to start off with about 10 drops of stevia here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> ten drops of stevia. Gonna blend it here so it's gonna get loud for a moment. And then we will cook our chicken. What did everybody marinate their chicken in? So just to show you what I did, barbecue flavoring works really nice with this dish. So I have marinated, I cut my chicken ahead of time. And I marinated, I put a little bit of my Worcestershire sauce in it from last night that we created. We're gonna be using that again later on. I put um, a little bit of extra of the stone ground mustard. I put a little splash of Bragg's liquid aminos, which is like soy sauce, I put some of that in there. And um, a little bit of two different barbecue seasonings or barbecue sauces that we have at our office, country sweet barbecue sauce and Carolina style barbecue sauce. Um, all, one of them is 10 calories a serving, the other one is uh, one. So really, really good, really, really easy to use, very, very tasty, approved on the Lose It stage of the Light of Life program. So we will be grilling that up, or I'm gonna pan fry that up here in just a moment. So it's gonna get loud, we're gonna blend our uh, vinaigrette together. And if you guys made the raspberry vinaigrette with me, you know how amazing that tasted. But here it's gonna get loud for a second. Now we're going to try it. See how it tastes here. Let's see where's my little trying. Mm. You got it. But I got it. Sorry, I was busy. It's okay. Okay, so here we have. You can see what this looks like here. Oh, let's see here. Um, we have people saying. Um, your zoom-ins are not showing. Uh, that's right, Renee. Renee, you gotta get in the Facebook group. Okay, so Christmas let's. Show. So if you are on this camera right over here, you only have one view. You need to get into the 20-day challenge group. If you are on this camera over here, then you get the whole production. You're good. Okay. Oh, you get the things like "Welcome to the show." I will show you guys. That way you guys can see. Welcome to the show! So stuff going on. It's yeah. a production here, but you gotta be inside the group. You gotta be inside the group. It's free to be in the group. Uh-huh. Alright, so at this point in time, here's what this looks like. Okay. You can see that here. Got really it's a it's a pretty thick, thick salad dressing. And we're gonna try it, see what we think here, see what it might need. Okay, mine's a little. A little bit vinegary, so I'm going to put a little bit more stevia. So I put 10 drops of stevia in. Let me put in about five more. One, two, three, four, five. So I ended up with 15 drops of stevia. 
Going to give it a quick blend again just to mix that stevia in there. There we go. Who all, we'll get some comments after this as well. This is going to get loud again. <laughs> all right. Woo! So what do we got going on? All right, so we've got some comments in coming through. Comments Yay, coming through. Yay, Renee joined our group here. Yay, Renee, okay, okay. welcome. Uh, oh, Bonnie's saying she did not. Zevia or the hop tea in your online store. Really? Well, I will look into that, Bonnie. Thank you for letting me know. It, it needs to be in there, for sure. And Mary's mm. saying, and I thought I have seen everything. And here you are, pulling all your tricks. That might have been a comment for uh, cutting, the, cutting the tomato. Or it could have been the comment for throwing the onion into... Oh. I bet onion. it's throwing the onion. Yeah. And, oh, that's probably it. That's and probably then it. James saying, that's a perfect angry Donald Duck <laughs> And we have a question about Nina. She's asking, what like what kind of knives are you using? Oh, oh, uh, oh. I use the... Well, let's sit down and talk for an hour about knives. Okay. I'm just kidding. But go um, ahead. Keep reading. Yeah, so she just wants to know okay. about that. So mm -hmm. you can let her know. She had another question. This dressing is perfect, by the way. So 15 drops of stevia did it for me. I also, I forgot to tell you this, I put half a teaspoon of lemon juice as well. So there's half a cup of Bragg's uh, apple cider vinegar, a teaspoon of um, lemon juice, and then it is, uh, let me make sure that's right. Yeah, one teaspoon of lemon juice, and then it was 15 drops of stevia, and it was one tablespoon of the mustard, the stone ground mustard. Yes, more and comments? Nyla, Nyla Pinter, I think she is new with us, so welcome, Nyla. Welcome, she Nyla. Your cutting board. Yeah, let me, I'll talk to you guys oh, about Jane. both. Yep, Jane is a friend with Nyla. Welcome, Nyla, friend of Jane. Yeah, so happy perfect. to have you here. Trudy's watching with us, so people are watching and um... Welcome Trudy! Yeah, and uh, Mary's saying, I marinated, marinated my chicken in the Simple Go Carolina cake Oh, barbecue perfect, sauce. great. It's gonna taste really good then. I am coming by to... So, one of the things to taste when you're tasting your dressing, if, you're, if you want to know if it's gonna be good on your salad, dip a little bit of your salad in it. That's a good way to taste and it. And taste it. Mm. It's very like, I don't know, it's tart. I it think. is tart. I like mm -hmm. tart. I like tart too. So it's like, it's, it's very like tart. A refreshing. Yes, refreshing, refreshing tart. Refreshing tartness. That's the extra like. lemon juice. Is it funny? Is it funny? I think our camera person thinks it's funny. Siri? Siri! Quit laughing over there. All right, so there's our dressing. Obviously, if you have one of those like dressing squeezer things, you can save a lot of this because you're not gonna put this much dressing on your salad, okay? So we're gonna set that aside for right now and unless I accidentally knock this over, I'm just gonna put the top back on there. So that'll be our dressing for the end. And let's go ahead and turn our burners on. If you did not marinate your chicken, totally fine. Put a splash of rags or some of chicken stock on your pan so you can keep it from um, burning. But we're gonna put the whole thing with the marinade in there. We're gonna put it in and then we'll pull out the chicken separately. I'm so excited because we have an extra camera angle. Oh! Bam! What, are, are we here? We're here right now. Siri? Yes. Well, hi everybody. <laughs> Be bad if my hat caught on fire there. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I just get really excited about I'm really stuff excited. Like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my chicken in. My pan's getting warm here. Go ahead and put the chicken in here and just empty out all the good juicy stuff there. Okay. And while that's going on, let's let's do let's have a conversation about knives. Now you want to make sure this doesn't burn because that juice, you see how that juice is bubbling up here? Alright, that means that it's gonna burn before the chicken cooks. So we're gonna want to keep an eye on this. I'm gonna turn my heat down to a four. So that's like a, a medium high heat. And you see how immediately the bubbles stop, okay? So my heat was just a little intense for it. Stir this around a little bit and get that chicken cooking. Also, if you notice how I already pre-cut the chicken before it was cooked, 
that's going to allow that marinade to soak into all the sides of the chicken better than if I just did a breast that way. Okay. So let's talk about knives. And actually, I'm going to, because I'm going to need to be kind of here. So let me show you a couple things about knives. First of all, the standard kitchen knife. Here you no, I got it. I, I'm, I can multitask. The standard kitchen knife looks like this. Okay. This is our standard kitchen knife. Um, one of the things that you want to look for is you want to look for one solid piece of steel that runs from the tip all the way to the end here. Okay, so you can see how that's one piece of steel. Um, oftentimes it stops here and it's not a whole piece of steel, it just has the handle on it. Um, the other thing that you're looking for is you're looking for steel. You don't want to use ceramic, and the reason you don't want to use ceramic, ceramic knives can't be sharpened. Okay, so if you're you know, frustrated your knife was super sharp, it's, it's ceramic, it can't be sharpened. Most of the cheap knives that you get at Walmart and Target and Best Buy, and well, Best Buy doesn't have knives. Not Best Buy. All those other places. Uh, those cheap knives, they, they can't be sharpened. When you get a nice knife, you really don't ever have to buy another one. You take it to a professional, costs about $20 to have it sharpened, it's worth it. Expect to pay at least $100 for a good knife. Unless you, what do you do with your knife? What did I do with it? Unless you put it in the... Unless you put it in the uh, garbage disposal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put your knife in the garbage disposal. Um, so, and then this is a different type of knife. This is called a Santoku. See how it has a different shape to it? So there's different sizes of Santoku knives. Um, let me see here. Ah, here's another one here. But how it has a wider blade. Um, this is a, it's actually a Japanese knife, and I really like the Santoku knives. Um, these are my favorite. It's really, you have a, a better rocking motion for chopping. Um, you also can use the top here if you're mincing, and it works really well to uh, put your fingers on the top to mince with. So this is um, a Santoku as opposed to a kitchen knife, but it is the Japanese version of a kitchen knife. So I do really enjoy that. We also have a paring knife, and the paring knives are going to be something like this. It's for detailed jobs. It's maybe for uh, taking the cores out of vegetables. Um, so it's for your more fine work, maybe some peeling work. Okay, so that is a paring knife. And uh, again, you know, for a good set of knives, you know, you need. I would recommend a a, um, a long kitchen knife, a medium kitchen knife, or santoku knife and then a um, paring knife. So even just three knives is gonna get you most of what you need. I also have the serrated knife that I use today, which is right here. And this is great for like cutting bread or uh, you know, with like I did with a tomato. Um, the, my knives are, are sharp enough where I can cut tomatoes without a problem. Um, but uh, when you're cutting multiple of them and you're going sideways, something like this can work really nice for this. I also use this, use this on like lettuce, so I'm not dulling my knife on simpler tasks. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of rundown on knives. I do love a really good knife. And then also if you get something like this that has um, like a, a cut in, um, and oftentimes Santoku knives will have like rivets in them, that's so the vegetables don't stick to the knife. So it helps them not stick if you provide a little bit of that, uh, that pocket there. So our chicken probably is done. The best way to, sh to see if the chicken's done, I'm gonna remove it from the heat for right now. I'm gonna just turn my heat off. And I'm gonna pick out the biggest piece of chicken. Because with chicken, you wanna just make sure it's cooked all the way through. So this looks like probably a good big piece of chicken. And I'm gonna bring it on over here. There we go. And I'm gonna cut this bad boy in half. And we're gonna see how cooked we are here. Okay, we're perfect, right? So what I'm looking for here, all right, is there should be no pink. All right, you can see how good that looks there. No pink. All right, so I'll get you guys to see this. That's how I know my chicken is nice and cooked. All right, so let's try this. Ooh. Spicy? No, it's perfect. It's just super juicy, exploding with flavor. So good. It's a party in your mouth. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Should we give one to Siri? Mm -hmm. Siri can have this one. Ooh, it's hot. hot. Ooh. There you go. Siri can have that one. Okay. Virtual. Virtual. Mmm. It's perfect. 
Now, if you want to cool your chicken off, you can cool your chicken off. Um, I don't mind some warm chicken on my salad, but I'm just going to leave this sitting out to the side here. How many, how many ounces did you put them in? Um, this was one chicken breast, so I think it was about five ounces. Um, so this would be a little bit more than one serving on the Vital Life uh, Lose It stage. Um, but like, just, you know, if you really want to know like some of the complexities of the flavors that really work together, you can create yourself a mini bite. So you put a little onion. I was going to leave in here. <laughs> <Mini> <laughs> bite. You're like, oh, mini bite. Um, put a little piece of strawberry on that bite. You put a little piece of cucumber on that bite. You know, cut this cucumber in half. All right, and let's put, oh, look at that little bit of baby, baby. spinach. Aw. Oh. All right, let's get that. There we go. Mmm. 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 Good? Everything, like, complements one another. Yeah. And you see how, like, the, the strength of the purple onion really goes together with everything, though? Yeah. It really... If it's you, really good. If you just eat the purple onion by itself. And it was very like subtle as well with yeah. everything else. So. If you if you were to eat the onion by itself, you can feel it in your nose. Almost bit your finger off. Then. You almost bit my finger off. I do feed her every day, <laughs> every day. This is this is the only time I eat, guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only when she's on camera. As soon as she's off camera, I don't let her eat. <laughs> Go do push-ups and run. This is this is uh, another oh, just another incentive why I was like, you know what, we should really provide value for mm. everybody in the community. Mm -hmm. I was getting so hungry. She was so hungry. <laughs> Starving her. No, no. I eat. All right, well. In my eight-hour period. That is the end of today. So let's see, what do we have going on for comments over there? Sure thing, sweet thing. Mm -hmm. Let's see. To confirm, you measure meat weight before you cook it? Yes, measure meat weight before cooking it. Great question. Mm -hmm. right. As far as uh, those who are on stage one of the Vital Life program, it's a pre-cooked weight. Very good. Awesome. And Bonnie's saying, my dressing, my dressing is really good. She used balsamic. Bonnie used balsamic instead of... Um, the apple cider vinegar and she enjoys it. Very good, Bonnie. Good substitution mm -hmm. to find what you like. Great. Um, any other? Mm. No, thank you. For me, guys. Thank you. We don't know other comments. Okay. Any questions? What about on the other group? Anything on the other group that we missed? Oh, yeah. Renee said that she has a favorite glass. She also Renee has, has a favorite glass. That's right, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You gotta have your favorite glass. Okay. And so we had nice. I had a comment early, let me try to find it. We're gonna try to get back to somebody's comment and make sure we answer everybody's question. While she does that, I'm just kind of snacking on the chicken over here. Mm -hmm. Trust me, if I were cooking too for you, like a group, I would not be using my same utensil here. But since I'm cooking for two in Siri, it's all right. I didn't, did, did you find it? Uh, Nina was saying, Oh, she's, she's letting us know she's using raspberry because her hubby's allergic to strawberries. Ah, yes. Nina's using raspberries because her mm -hmm. hubby's allergic to strawberries. Yeah, and she's asking, um, what type of cooking pan do you use besides the green pans brand? I'm not sure. Yeah, so copper is my absolute favorite. Cop favorite. Copper pans, they're great for nonstick. They don't transfer anything dangerous into your food. Um, and I've, I've been thrilled with my copper pan, so I use a lot of copper pans. I do have this really nice steel set of pans, but they're not here. Um, okay, and we have another question about, I'm assuming the Worcestershire sauce may be used for fish. Mm-hmm. Yep, and we're going to use that for, we're actually going to use that, we're doing, um, tomorrow, I'm going to be posting what we're doing. Tomorrow, make sure you look at it because there'll be some prep work that you want to do uh, but tomorrow is jambalaya oh my god yes excited. jambalaya so again we're only using one protein jambalaya calls for three proteins they calls for sausage chicken and shrimp we're just going to be using shrimp you can use whatever you want we're going to be using shrimp um, but we're going to make every we're going to try to build in the flavors with the seasoning so we're going to put some sausage flavoring in there and so um, you're going to make up that sausage flavoring ahead of time if you haven't made up your own Worcestershire sauce, you'll want to also make that up ahead of time so that recipe is in there. If you're like Bonnie, 
and you don't like the apple cider vinegar, then you may want to cut down on that with your Worcestershire Schneider sauce or um, substitute that for like a balsamic vinegar or a red wine vinegar or a vinegar that isn't as strong as the apple cider vinegar. So just some options for you there. Cool. Thank you for that. Cool. Tiffany's saying she likes your bowls, the one that you have ingredients in. Ah, the bowls. Those are wood bowls. I think I got those at Bed Bath & Beyond. So I will say if I had to buy them again, I probably wouldn't get them because they crack really easily. So I actually have one of these bowls that's cracked. Did it did they crack easily or did they, they do crack? no because we I have another one cracked from oh. all, the, all the washing that I'm doing with them um, they're cracking so oh. they look cool but man I'm running into cracking issues you can see here if we get a close-up here so I got this you know that crack is new right there so it's just you know washing them drying them and I don't put them in the dishwasher or anything but just washing them and drying them they are starting to get a little wear and tear on them so Okay, Mary says she lost the sound. I wonder if it's just Mary or if we lost the sound. So. Can everybody hear me? Okay. And uh, Jane is asking, does the weight of the meat shrink down in the cooking process? So typically the weight of the meat will shrink down a little bit. Some of that is the moisture getting out of the meat. But just as a, as a nice standard to keep things consistent, um, do a pre-cooked weight. So it'll, it'll always be less, especially when you're dealing with your seafood. And that's one of the reasons why um, we... Uh, have you have more seafood as well because it does cook down significantly especially with like scallops so i believe tomorrow we're going to be doing jambalaya so tune in at the same time i will be posting what you need for ingredients for tomorrow so you can have those ready you guys are doing such an amazing job cooking with me i love the pictures that you're posting make sure you join me right around the noon time for tomorrow for your daily dose of davis that's your midday motivational time uh, as well as your live questions and answers um, so join me around that time. I will again post tomorrow about what time I'll be going live. So make sure you join me there. Love to have you. And um, remember that today is the perfect day to live a vital life.